consequence. Probably the most important word in our lives. Everything we do, everything we feel, everything we imagine has a cause and a consequence. Do we make things happen or do things just happen to us? What if we can't do anything? And what would become of a man who couldn't or didn't want to measure the consequences of his own actions? Maybe he'd become a listener, unable to speak. Maybe he would feel but be unable to react. Maybe he would live a life without really existing. It's easy to lose everything. It just takes a couple of wrong moves. I'm feeling a bug.
A beautiful girl, big house, nice car, good job, great friends. You know how nice it feels when things are going well and everything goes as planned. We solve our problems with smiles on our faces and nothing seems to faze us, nothing except finding a strange red smile in an unexpected place. Have you ever felt followed? Watched? It's really not that comfortable. As I'm staring at all of you I know there's something that I should say about it Or maybe that's just me As I'm standing close to you I feel the sun Why are there always times in our lives when nothing seems to be enough? Money, possessions, love. We like to test our limits. When we've got one, we want a hundred. When we get a hundred, just gotta have a thousand. When is it enough? We only see how unimportant it all is when the most important things in our lives are jeopardized. Then all the rest doesn't seem to matter. So when you're craving more, you better look down. But the 
Dreams and nightmares can tell us a lot. They can warn us, and they can deceive us. Have you ever had a dream about something that happened the next day? Do you know what a premonition is? We shouldn't underestimate a dream, but we should never ignore a nightmare.
Sadness. <laughs> what can I say about sadness? We just feel it, like it or not. Like in an old music box, it's loud in the beginning, but it fades out. Can't keep playing forever. So all we can do is try to overcome, but it takes time to heal.
up call to see things in a different way? Do we really need to lose it all to cherish what we have? That music will never sound the same. Those flowers proved her presence was still there. She was close, very close. It almost felt real. It feels like I won't pull through Every time I look at what did you do Maybe that's just me I am staring but I can't see I think I can feel you watching over me But you're not here to see This should always be the goal, to overcome, to move forward in our lives. 
But we can't avoid thinking, what could have prevented all of this? What could have been done differently? They say the early bird gets the worm. But what would happen if we woke up late on that very same day? Would the result be the same? At that time, I thought my life was over. All I ever knew was gone. I had lost everything. But everything happens for a reason. And when you realize this, you need to think on what you're about to do because one bad move can change the outcome. Can you really give a dog a bone and expect him not to eat it? Nobody was there to tell me otherwise, and I wasn't there to listen. The bone was there and the bone was mine, only mine. And the 
Revenge. If you can have it, why not? The working ground of the devil is strange, and if sadness, anger, and hate are the only things pumping through our veins, and if you think there's nothing left to lose, and nothing that can change our minds, then these feelings will show us that we're still alive. My nightmare was about to begin. Whatever. He could burn in hell.
six years. Six long years. Can you even imagine what it is to spend that much time in a place like that? They say life is short, but not in there. The days were long, the weeks dragged, months felt like lifetimes, and life felt like an eternity. Do we really need to lose it all to cherish what we have? If life is really that short, why waste it like that? How many mistakes does it take before we get it right? One thing is for sure. Six years in lockup. It's enough to learn something. Тук съм, защото продадох свободата си. Поех вината на един от големите тук в София. Те си плащат и си плащат добре, за да може такива рибки като мен да са вътре. Знам, ще стоя доста време тук, но поне семейството ми и най-вече децата ми ще има какво да дадат. Ali na mim dele, na São Vicente, por causa de uma engenheira que me fazia. Eu já estou aqui porque cometi um crime em Buenos Aires. Dabei habe ich jemanden getötet. Ich hätte nie gedacht, dass ausgerechnet mir so etwas passieren könnte. Weil ich nicht mehr Geld kaufen kann. Estou nisso desde de garoto, vendendo, chefiando. C'est quelque chose que je n'avais jamais fait avant, une, une impulsion, une impulsion que j'ai n'ai pas pu contrôler. O gemigo vai ter comigo. Eu podia participar num roubo, uma coisa fácil. Em princípio, era uma coisa sem nenhum problema. Era um roubo simples. Por vingança, meti um tipo em Avellaneda, um covarde de merda. Eu estou muito mais feliz com o meu vaso. Quando eu tiro isso, como é que eu vou fazer? Se eu estiver aqui, eu vou fazer de novo. Se, se eu riesco a uscir da vida da sua casa de posto, juro que, que não te reprovo nem que morto. Rigo dritto, vida nova, honesta, basta destronçada. E já vi muitas famílias ser destruídas por cada droga. Bom, eu sei que eu mereço estar aqui, de passar mais de 10 anos em prisão, mas eu sei também que, que sortir será difícil de gerir essa vida. 
cette culpabilité. Agora, um captador não tem nenhuma condição. O captador não tem nada e os filhos têm esse espelho fechado na cadeia. Eu estou aqui, ó. Estou aqui, vou cumprir a pena. Todavía me quedan seis años en esta basura. La verdad que si pudiese volver en el tiempo, no lo volvería a hacer. Mas yo gostaría de ver esos engravatados ahí, aquí dentro también. ¿Quién lleva droga en la favela? ¿Quién es que lleva? No sé cómo voy a llegar a gerir mi relación con los otros, con las mujeres. En todo caso, eso podrá... No voy a ser como antes. Tengo que ficar ahí y tener fin de esa pena. E depois reativei em vida normalmente que trabalho neste. Foi, foi um impulso, que não, foi um impulso que não pude controlar. Some people are always there for you. Since the moment you were born, their entire life is dedicated to you. It doesn't matter if the result of their effort isn't what they expected it to be. They'll still be there. They'll forgive and understand you with arms wide open, always ready to help you move forward. Most of us don't really understand what freedom is all about. But on that day, it was easy for me to understand.
Some people can get by without their family around. Others never need to fall in love. But are there people that can live without a single friend? Friendship is strong. So strong it can stand the tests of time. It can survive constant change and the biggest upheavals in our lives. Friendship always seems to endure. A life without friends is like a pool table without a cue ball. A glass without a drink. Desire without satisfaction. When we know something is bad for us, why do we keep doing it? What makes it so hard to stop? The sickness was hard to cure, and I was still sick, but I hadn't realized it yet. Somebody did, and that somebody was turning me into a wounded animal caught in a gigantic web. Is your sickness hard to cure? Will it help you to grow? Is it changing yourself every day? While these were 
set to be lifted. My insanity was about to reach its highest point. The answers to all my questions could be there, waiting for me. I felt it was the end of the line. It was a strange but perfect environment to throw me completely off the rails. One dead, one still missing. But that time, I was ready for forgiveness. I just wanted to know who was spinning the web.
Let me tell you a story about envy. There were two men lost in the desert. Certain death approaching unless they could find food or water soon. And on the third day, a genie appears and says to one of the men who's crawling on his hands and knees, I'll grant you a single wish, but your friend will receive the same in double. The crawling man quickly replied, I want to be blind, but only in one eye. And that's the truth about envy. Some people want what others have. Some people can't accept defeat. Some can't live without the things they desire most. And these people are capable of anything. Absolutely anything. Anything to make sure that nobody else can have the things they want so badly, but can't ever have. Her obsession was so overwhelming that she couldn't accept the rejection. So she decided to ruin the life of the person who had what she wanted so badly. And what she wanted was her love. She did everything she could possibly do to ruin my life. And she spun the web to kill the very woman we loved. Do you see how easy it is to lose everything with just a couple of wrong moves? How not measuring the consequences of your own actions can bring you closer to making bad choices? Checkmate, son. I chose the only right thing to do. At that time, I thought my life was over. All I ever knew was gone. I'd lost everything but everything happens for a reason. And when you realize this, you need to think on what you're about to do. 
because one right move can change a lifetime. And I praise life.